So in all, we might want to have eight different layouts. Location plan, detailed site plan, section one, section two, construction system, history and context, environment and sustainability, photos and notes. And these all relate to our master A3 landscape title block. If we're not sure, we can always rename that one. So right click layout settings, we see that it's called A3 landscape. So we see the A3 landscape down here. We can rename that, so we can call this one A3 landscape if we want, site report. And we could call it a master if that helps. So now we know what we're looking for. It's a bit of a mouthful, but that's fine. It's not going to represent anywhere. Now when we go to our layouts, we'll see that we have a title block on the page, but we can't edit it. Where is that title block coming from? That's coming from our master. Whatever's on the master will be represented on the layouts, but it won't be able to be printed. Sorry, it won't be able to be edited. It won't be able to be grabbed. So what do we do? We can edit this in our master. We can draw a title block in our master, or we can draw it as a reference drawing and then link it here. For now, just to keep it simple, we will draw it in place, but then of course we could move it later if we felt that, that was necessary. So let's redefine this with a little bit more intention. So I'm going to use my polyline tool. I'm going to draw a box around the whole edge. And I'm going to offset a line from the bottom up. Thirty millimeters. I want to break this into three, so I'm going to drag a copy down ten millimeters and down another ten millimeters. I can then break that up horizontally if I want to. So I can draw a line, I'll just break it in half for now. Let's draw another line. I'll do 100 millimeters. And we could now add in some text if we wanted to, to be able to explain this. Remembering that the bottom right hand corner of our drawing is the most important point. Because in terms of folding a drawing, the bottom right hand corner will be the one that remains visible. So if that's a landscape horizontal border title block or a vertical portrait title block, that bottom right hand corner is still the most important. We don't need to put in anything at the moment, we can just leave that for now and we can come back to it later. So in terms of our drawings, when we go to our location plan, we don't have anything in there. What we can do is to get our drawing, our saved view. We see that it's 1 to 1000, and we can drag and drop this onto our layout. We see that that's tiny, that's the point. We're just using that as a reference at the moment. And now what we want to do is to import an image and scale that image up in order to make that appropriately sized to be able to use as a location plan. So if we go to Google, maybe, the address is 13 Sudan Street through. We can go to Maps. If I zoom out, what sort of scale do I want? I want to be able to see this escarpment, I want to be able to see the ocean here. Ideally, I want to keep the orientation the same. So when we're talking about maps, north is directly up the page. That's just the standard. So if we're looking at our maps here, we see that north isn't exactly up the page necessarily. 
Where is north? Well, we need to reference that based on our drawings. So for now, we'll just leave it, and we'll come back to that later. But we don't see a lot of information when we're in this map view. If we change to our <coughs> satellite view, we do see more information. We can see houses, we can see... <coughs> Here's the cliffs that we were talking about, and we can see the ocean. So what sort of scale do we want? The house is so small here that we can't see anything, so that's not necessarily useful. Now, I don't need this big box here that's getting in my way, so I can move that, and that'll give me more of a wider landscape view, so I can do that and zoom in as much as I feel that I need to. Zoom in all the way, so... Oh, a bit too far. Let's go back out. So this is what we basically would classify as our site plan, and the more we zoom out, the more it becomes more of a location plan. That's probably the extent of what I want, so I can see the, the bushland and the beach in one view. So I could take a screenshot of that using a print screen uh, function on your keyboard. Mine is Shift Command 3 on my Mac. You have a print screen key on your keyboard. That will either save an image, save it as an image. Mine has saved that onto my desktop. Screenshot. Or it could have saved that as a copy, and then you could open that in Photoshop. So let's do that. Let's assume that yours saved it as a copy. So what you want to do is open up Photoshop. Once Photoshop is open, once Photoshop is open, you want to drag and drop your image into Photoshop or paste your image into Photoshop. Edit paste if it was saved to your clipboard. Now you could use the image just like this. We could turn some of these names off if that's what you wanted to do. We could, because it's a screenshot, we could crop it down. So we're seeing less information. Image crop. But what I do want to keep is this scale bar down here, because this scale is going to help me to identify how big the image should be. So image crop, control D, control S to save. I can close that back down again. I'll leave that one there and let's just go back here. Another option apart from Google that we can use is, I'll copy that, is six maps. Now this is New South Wales government site. It has slightly better quality images than Google and some more information. We need to know which is the area we are searching for, so we can try to paste or type in the address. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't in terms of determining where it is. The best, or well, a good result is it gives us an option here so we can click on that option and then it takes us straight to that. Now I just turned that off as I pressed enter. Let's do that again. Yes. Now if I close this box down, it hides it. So what I can do is move this to the side. Zoom out. Using the slider. And we can see that we get the same effect, but the quality is a little bit better and it doesn't have all of the extra text. In this case, it's a little bit nicer because it also gives us this little um, golf flag, which is just helping us locate or identify the site in particular. So I will take a screenshot of this with the flag in place, hopefully without moving my screen too much.
Then I'll close this down or move it away and take another screenshot. This time it's cleaner and I can have a better scale bar. So this is helping me to understand. And just in terms of understanding a scale, we're looking at a scale of nearly 1 to 10,000. So that's telling us that our scale of 1 to 1,000 that we used on our location plan is not going to be small enough. We're going to need to make it more like 1 to 10,000 if we want to see this entire image in one go. So we can do the same thing with that one. That's saved as another screenshot. So we can open that up or both of those up in Photoshop if we want to and edit those. Otherwise, we could leave them just as they are and drag and drop them into Archicad. So let's go back into... Archicad. Now where do we want to place it? Do we want to place it on the layout? I'd suggest not. Let's instead put it on a worksheet. I'm going to create a new worksheet here, new independent worksheet, and we're going to call this the location plan photo. And let's drag and drop. I'm not going to worry about the Google one. I'm going to use the six maps one. Drag and drop them into Archicad. Now we see we only do one at a time. So I just did the one with the data and then I'll do this one and I want to put them directly over the top of each other. It's very important to keep them over the top of each other because that means I'm going to scale them both together. Now, how do we scale? We select both of them. So I'm selecting a box to select over all of it. Now I want to resize. How do we resize? Edit, reshape, resize. We see that this could also be Command K, Control K, if you like using keyboard shortcuts. Again, I don't use keyboard shortcuts very much because you can't see what I'm doing if I use keyboard shortcuts. So I'm just going to use this command, Edit, Reshape, Resize. The other thing that we can do, which I like doing, is creating toolbars or palettes which have these here. So I could use this tool as well if I wanted to. Define graphically, yes, because I don't know what the percentage is that I need to refine it to. So we're going to use define graphically, press OK. And then I'm going to scale this up until it's the right size. Now this is where I'm being a little bit iffy. It's not exactly right, but it's going to be close enough. So we see that this is 200 meters, so I'm going to click where it the zero is, or click where the line of zero is, move to where 200 is, click, and then I'm going to type in 200 meters. So 2, 0, 0, 0, that's 2 meters, 20 meters, 200 meters, enter. So that's now scaled it all the way up. Now where is that sitting? That can be a little bit hard to know. I need to now flip these images around. So we're going to right click, display order, center back. So now I'm bringing the one with the little flag to the foreground. Now to make this a little bit easier to read, I'm going to redraw this flag. And again, it's going to be pretty rough, but it's a good way to start. So if I now take this and I trace reference my upper ground floor, shows trace reference, I'm not going to see much or anything. Because my image is on the foreground, the image is going to hide anything underneath. But if I flip this relationship, so if I go to my trace reference settings and switch reference with active, I can flip this relationship And we can now see that this is my project. Sorry, the red is making it very hard to see. Let's change that red down so it's not so vibrant. And we'll make it the original color. So this is my actual project. And this is my trace reference. So we see it's a long, long way away. So we want to move this into the right place. How do we do that? Basically, we're hoping that it's the right scale already, but it's possibly the wrong orientation, and it's possibly in the wrong position. So what I'm going to do is to copy this site. Copy this one. Let's go back to our worksheet. 
location plan photo, paste. And this now is sitting in the right place. That's where I want to copy that to. So I'm going to take my little rectangle that I drew and take both drawings, move, drag, drag to the right position, and then rotate or edit, move, rotate, rotate to the right orientation. Now again this is pretty rough but it's close it's close enough for what we need. So I can now hide this one. In fact I could make this more accurate if I wanted to by deleting the red line and recreating the red line. And this time I'm going to hide or delete the image that has the flag on it. I don't need the flag anymore. I now just want the reference of where that flag was. So I've now got a location plan with my boundary line shown, which shows the relationship of the beach and the hills. Now if I wanted to do this a little bit more cleanly, a bit nicer, I could have photoshopped out of all of the edges so I didn't see the screenshot. What we're going to do is we're just going to crop down the image so we can only see what we want to see by masking it. So let's save this as a save view. So we'll call this location plan photo. And then into our location plan, we'll drag and drop this. What do we know? It's too big, isn't it? And we talked about this already. We said 1 to 1,000 is too big. We probably want 1 to 10,000. So I could change the scale without getting out of this view. So right click, view settings. Instead of being 1 to 100, we want 1 to 10,000. If it doesn't say it there, I can press custom and type it in. Now we can see that's what our location plan looks like at 1 to 10,000. It's such a big page. If I go into the settings frame, I can fit frame to drawing, so that'll manually shrink that down, or sorry, automatically shrink that down. And of course, I can then manually adjust that frame as well if I want to. So I can choose to deliberately chop off or crop more of that image if I feel that it's not necessary. So I'm left with enough to be able to see what I want and then I might decide maybe I can make this a bit bigger I could do this in a, a few ways but because there's nothing important in terms of drawn information another way that I could resize it is to resize it not to scale if that was relevant I could select this image delete this one. I could select this image, I could go into the settings, drawing selection settings, size and appearance, and I could do two things. I could say magnify. I want to make it 200% or now 1 to 5,000. And I could say, yep, yeah, 1 to 5,000 pretty much fits on the page. Let's just move that right to the edge. Great. 1 to 5,000, that works really well. Or if I wanted to fiddle, I could go resize, define graphically, and resize it graphically until I got to the, the size where I wanted it to be, if I wasn't interested in keeping it to scale. Great, so now we have a location plan at 1 to 5,000. I wasn't exactly sure what scale it would be. I, I cropped it down in this case, so I'm definitely not seeing the escarpment but I'm seeing the bushland that's related to the escarpment. I'm seeing just the edge of the beach. I don't need to see all of the ocean. I just need to see where it starts. I see the main town center of Thirul. I see the train line that runs through 
and I see other important areas like schools and the um, public parks. And so as a location plan works, that's a great start. Now, what do I have to add next? I have to add a lot of information. I have to add notes and overlays, site data or site analysis data, contextual data, environmental data. I can do that all by hand or I can use other tools in ARCHICAD to be able to draw that. Or I could save this now because I know it's the scale, export it out of ARCHICAD, put it into Photoshop or Illustrator or something else and then work on it there as well.